Today, as I mentioned in the Dragonfly review, we're going to go over the questions we've accumulated over the course of several videos, leading up to actually covering the model, as well as throwing in a few last minute comments from under the review itself. I've lumped similar questions together by category, and we'll then start with those related to the Dragonfly's performance, followed by mechanical questions, including durability concerns, before finishing off with going over how the Dragonfly compares to a variety of models that viewers have asked about. Before all that though, there's one question that doesn't really fit into any of these categories that I feel should be addressed first, where the viewer asks, please investigate and examine the modifications they've made to the redesigned seat unit after they recalled the original design from the market. Can you please confirm what modifications they've done to prevent the hazardous situations whereby, apparently, the backrest of the seat could collapse backwards in the parent facing position after unfolding? We were only able to get the Dragonfly after the seat frame was updated, so I unfortunately can't give exact information on the specific components, but my understanding is that there was an extra latching step needed when unfolding the stroller in parent-facing mode that confused some users, so the seat frame was redesigned to lock in place without this step, and an auditory clicking cue was added to signify to parents that the seat frame was now locked in place. This information is thanks to viewers who commented under our first two videos on the Dragonfly, who had direct experience with dealing with Boogaboo themselves and or retailers during this time, and if any of them are watching, we really appreciate taking the time to share this information. Alright, let's move on to performance-oriented questions then, where the first question is, how is the suspension and stability of the stroller over different terrain, i.e. gravel, grass, dirt roads, cobblestone, or snow? Does it handle rougher terrain well? And also, how tall is the seat for the stroller? As far as the driving part of the question goes, the model feels decently stable, and in terms of both wheel size and suspension, it should handle gravel, grass, and dirt roads just fine. Cobblestones are fine as well for the most part, though there's actually a lot of variety with cobblestones, and I've been places with really rough, older style stones where I could see the dragonfly struggling. As far as snow goes, an inch or so is going to be fine, but much more than this, and it might get clogged up in the front forks. There were actually multiple questions about seat size, and how the model will work for an older toddler, so it might be easiest to just give my measurements, where the seat back measures 56 centimeters tall, the canopy is flush with the top of the seat, the baseboard measures 27 centimeters deep, the leg rest is 18 centimeters long, and if you lower the leg rest, then there's 33 centimeters distance down to the front frame, which is not exactly a foot rest, but which will undoubtedly be used as one anyway when it comes to older toddlers. Lengthwise, these are acceptable dimensions, only 3 centimeters shorter for the sitting surface than the fox, but with that added length that one gets when folding down the leg rest. As I mentioned in the review though, the width is a bit tight at 27 centimeters. Not horrible, but more the sort of width one usually gets with a single seat on a double model, or with the larger Nuna strollers that also have somewhat narrow seats. And for this reason, even though a larger toddler will still fit, I was still able to use the donkey for five-year-olds on a few occasions, for example, just for getting around at least, you won't get the same sort of full comfort feeling with this width that you get with a lot of other strollers during that three to four year old end of stroller use phase, in my opinion. All right. The next question is, it would be great if you could show folding with the bassinet in. The Boogaboo videos show it happening as a one, but in my experience, it requires a second step. And I'll add to this question that I also got an earlier comment from someone concerned with the same thing, that the handle needs to be pulled on the bassinet to get it to fold flat. In the beginning, nine times out of 10, the bassinet wouldn't fold on its own for me either. But after examining Boogaboo's information on the matter and testing it a bunch, it's simply a matter of force with how you fold the front frame against the rear. It needs to be done in a quick whipping motion. And once you get the feeling of how to do it in your fingertips, it'll be easier. To begin with, I recommend rotating the wheels outwards and locking the brakes. Then use both handle buttons to lower the handle down to the fold line. Then, continuing to hold both buttons, whip the stroller together. If it doesn't go the first time, you can wiggle the chassis a bit and the bassinet should fall. Though in general, if you have trouble using enough force, it is probably better to use the handle. All right, there are a few more questions on folding, 
with one viewer asking whether the handlebar can go in all the way without folding so the stroller can fit in a small lift without doing a complete fold. And the answer here is sadly no. You don't have to fold the stroller all the way to get the handle to slide in further, but you do have to fold it enough that you ought to take your kit out first in my opinion. The next viewer has a few questions and writes, would love to know how wide the thing is when upright and not perfectly folded, like if it bunches up with use and becomes fatter. Also, how stable is it when in the luggage storage mode? We live in a small flat and need something compact, but not just tiny for the sake of it. So weighing up if this will fall straight over when walked past and clipped, or if it would be a good slim line and sturdy regular use option for us. What is the carry handle situation? Can I get this thing up and down stairs for our flat? I don't find it to be particularly bulky past the stated folded dimensions. Some strollers are definitely like this, with the seat sliding open a bit or the canopy fabric falling out. But this one is pretty tight, with the seat facing both directions, as well as with the bassinet. I also feel that it has quite a stable standing fold versus a lot of other models. It will topple if not too hard, of course, but it's not going to fall easily from just a little bump when passing it and the use of the handle as feet here, as opposed to just the front wheels, gives it an advantage for stability versus a lot of other models. Lastly, it's pretty light for carrying, and even though the carry strap looks short, it's stretchy enough to use over your shoulder, though you can always just carry it by the handle as well. Next question. I would like to know the height of the handlebar when you're in the middle of folding it before everything gets compacted down, when the handlebar is at its tallest position. So, Technically, the lowest height here is 137 centimeters to get the handle up to the fold line, which is a bit too tall for shorter parents in my opinion. That being said, the handle doesn't actually lock here. It can still slide through, which may be fiddly for some people. And the lowest possible locking point then is one up at around 143 centimeters. That being said, it is possible to flip out the front frame even lower than 137 centimeters when the handle is only partially up, and then pull it out fully afterwards, but it would take a bit of practice probably to get this to go smoothly every time. Moving on, the next question is, I wonder if the Fox bassinet is going to be compatible with it. I don't like that the Dragonfly bassinet has no ventilating air panels on the sides like the Fox one does. The only ventilation I noticed in the video is at the back of the baby's head. And the viewer also asks, the wheels look a bit weak, so probably only good on pavement, or they will break quickly. Another thing that I don't understand in the recent stroller construction fashion is making the handle directly aligned with the front wheels. Not only does it mean that you're really pushing just the small wheels at the front, but it's also harder to pull the stroller backwards after you on stairs or rough terrain. The Fox bassinet won't be compatible, unfortunately. For me, the ventilation is fine for the size of the bassinet, and you can always remove the storm cover as well if you need to. The wheels are decent in construction, and Boogaboo's building in of the ball bearings in the rear frame, as opposed to within the wheels themselves, actually makes me think that, at least the rear wheels, are likely to last as a single component far longer than a lot of other areas of the chassis. That being said, I agree that this is a model to be used primarily on pavement, as there are many other areas of the chassis that will likely loosen or potentially break from a lot of rougher strolling. Note that it's a bad idea in my experience to pull this stroller, as well as most other strollers out there as well, upstairs at all. Next question. I would like to know whether it comes with a car seat adapter and whether it's compatible with the Nuna Pipa Lite RX specifically. A comparison video with Nunatriv Next and other similar type strollers. The model we got did not come with car seat adapters, unfortunately, but the car seat adapters that can be purchased separately will work with Nuna seats. As far as the Nunatriv Next goes, we'll touch on the basic differences in the third part of this video when we briefly go over a variety of comparisons that have been requested for the Dragonfly, though this is definitely also a pair of models that we plan to do a more in depth comparison with in the near future. All right, last question for the first section. Anyone concerned at some point, someone will fold the bassinet for getting an infant is still in it. And my answer is that that's a pretty horrifying thought and I sure hope not. All right, let's move on to mechanical questions then. Where the first question is, I'd like to hear your thoughts if it's now safe to use as a double, assuming they've made adjustments and the viewer mentions materials in the frame and reinforcement. To my knowledge, the recall of the seat unit was about single child safety, 
though one can attach a wheeled board to the model. In my opinion, however, the lightweight and somewhat fragile build of the handle in particular make it not a model where I would recommend using a wheeled board, as this is likely to greatly accelerate wear. Next question, are the wheels rubber or plastic? They're made of rubber and feel pretty high quality in my opinion. The next viewer asks, my question is about the fold. Do you also think that in the long run, dirt would get into the mechanism and jam it up? In terms of the exposed wire on the front frame, yes. I do think this is likely to be a problem, both with grit and rust. The rest of the folding system is higher up though, so other than any dirt that might be brought up into the folding mechanism by the handle feet, which might wind up being a concern, I'm not really too worried about the rest of it. That being said, after only a week or so of testing, the Dragonfly's handle already feels a bit janky in my opinion, in terms of sliding smoothly in and out of the lower portion of the handle arms, to find various locking points for the height. And to keep it working smoothly then, I do think that regular lubrication right down into this system will be a necessary thing, either silicon spray or maybe even something a bit more permeating like WD-40. One more set of questions from under the review itself slipped into this section before we had to cut off looking in order to write the script, where the viewer asks, I would love to know how it compares to a baby jogger kind of deal. Central London flat, stairs, so needs to be lightweight but handle cobbles, shockingly bad pavements, and public transport. How are the wheels? Is it shaky or are the front wheels gimmicky compared to your fave baby jogger types? For lifting this thing in and out of a flat and up and down stairs, will this cut it? I'm convinced the fold is as easy as it looks. I literally cannot get the hang of the Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2 fold. But what about the handling? What are your thoughts on it being overnight safe to sleep in and it being used as a bassinet bed? Final question. How upright is the seat compared to other styles? Some of the ultra compacts can be quite reclined. Lifting the stroller in and out of a flat and compact storage with its stable standing fold are quite nice in my opinion. If the terrain is continuously rough, then I would prefer to get something a little sturdier probably, and less complicated internally, as I would be worried about the stroller loosening up and getting fiddly a bit too quickly, though maneuvering itself is generally smooth, other than, in my opinion, with a larger child forward facing, where tipping may be a little heavy for some people. The fold is fine once you get used to it, but right out of the box, I would say it has a higher learning curve than the yo-yo. The seat frame has a good upright position, which is generally the case with reversible seat models. A lot of ultra compacts, and three wheelers for that matter, are worse with this, due to the seats being suspended from the handle arms. As far as the bassinet and overnight sleeping goes, it's unfortunately not approved for overnight sleeping. I'm guessing with the Baby Jogger reference that the viewer means the City Mini GT2, and since we're now moving on to comparison questions anyway, I would say that the Dragonfly will be nicer for storing in your flat, especially during the newborn phase but after this as well, has that reversible seat, has a more upright seat, and provides larger and easier to access storage. The City Mini GT2, on the other hand, is significantly sturdier, will be better over rough ground, is easier to fold, though can't easily be stored upright, and has a much larger seat as well, which will be useful when your child gets older. Alright, moving on to other questions about how the Dragonfly matches up to competing models, there were several requests to compare the Dragonfly to the Upper Baby Cruise V2, where viewers have asked, in the context of comparison, about longevity, while I do like the size of the Dragonfly, do you think it will hold up well over time? Terrain capability, do you think the Dragonfly will stand up to urban living like pavements, streets, sidewalks, and a bit of dirt, grass, etc.? Seat size, do you think the seat will work until the end of a kid's stroller days? And lastly, folded size, I struggle with the size of the Vista in the back of a Subaru. This looks lighter but much longer. Please lay it next to the Cruise V2 so we can get an idea of how square or rectangular it is. The Cruise V2 is significantly sturdier than the Dragonfly in its basic build, though, to my knowledge, Boogaboo's guarantee is twice as long, which does count for something. The Cruise V2 has larger wheels and much better suspension, and while both models are generally oriented towards similar, lighter conditions, the Cruise V2 can do bumpy ground both more comfortably in relation to shock absorption and with a lot less worry over how wear will affect the chassis. 
As far as seat size goes, the Cruise V2 seat is both wider and longer and will thus fit an older toddler better than the Dragonflies. With regards to folded size, we are not a store, so I unfortunately don't have both of these models in at the moment. But with the seats attached, folded dimensions are pretty similar, with the Cruise V2 being a bit thicker, 39 centimeters versus the Dragonfly's 36, and a bit wider, 58 centimeters versus the Dragonfly's 52, but also shorter, 86 centimeters versus the Dragonfly's 90. As a last note here on the comparison between these two that no one asked about, I feel the Cruise V2 is more comfortable to maneuver and tip, and also that it has a more comfortably accessible shopping basket. The next most requested comparison is between the Dragonfly and the Nuna Triv and Nuna Triv Next, which, as a heads up to start with, are not equal in my opinion, with the basic Triv feeling quite unstable, almost a tipping hazard, due to the build of its back frame, having significantly less terrain capability than the next version, and also lacking a footrest on the front frame. Picking between the Dragonfly and the basic Triv, I would in most cases choose the Dragonfly. But, that being said, with the Triv Next, it's more of a toss-up. Here's the breakdown. The Dragonfly is a bit tighter and sturdier in the overall structure of the chassis, and in that sense is more durable, though it's also more complex in its mechanisms, which works against this advantage for durability, as there are more things that can go wrong. And it's also a tad lighter than the Triv Next, at least with the seat. The Triv Next, by contrast, has a wider, though a tad shorter seat, the same terrain capability, and a shopping basket that's shorter and less weight capable, though easier to access in my opinion. But it also folds much easier, folds a lot smaller, and it's significantly cheaper. Choosing between them, if one is looking at these models for a heavily car-based lifestyle, then the Triv Next is generally a better choice in my opinion while for city life without a car, the Dragonfly would probably be the better choice. Though I'd note here that for this sort of lifestyle, the Cruise V2, Jules Hub Plus, and Cybex Mios are also strong contenders, with the right choice depending on the city and one's specific needs. We were also asked to compare the Dragonfly directly to the Hub Plus, which, like the Cruise V2, is also significantly sturdier and a bit heavier than the Dragonfly, and it also folds smaller and has a wider though shorter seat. Shock absorption and terrain capability is roughly the same with the Hub Plus as with the Dragonfly, but maneuvering and tipping are easier. Which one is the better model, when also taking into account additional characteristics like the Dragonfly's bassinet folding and standing fold, will depend on a few factors that I'll cover in a full video at some point comparing these two models, though generally, I do prefer the Hub Plus. The next question is between the Dragonfly and the Fox 5, and asks specifically about performance on plowed snow sidewalks, and my answer here is that the Fox 5 is a much more terrain-capable model. The Dragonfly can handle plowed sidewalks fine in my opinion, though the icy moonscape that sometimes comes mid-winter will be a lot less pleasant with the Dragonfly than with the Fox. In addition to this factor though, there are a lot of other advantages that come with a larger, heavier, and more durable model like the Fox, which we'll deal with in a future one-on-one -on -one comparison, or as we're thinking about currently, possibly just a single video comparing the Dragonfly to the rest of Boogaboo's line which would include the B6, which we've also been asked about, and where the short answer is that, despite not feeling that the Dragonfly is all it could be, it's in my opinion, definitely better than the B in many, many ways. There's a lot of nitty gritty to go over here regarding looseness, differences in the seat and bassinet, differences in the mechanisms, and the fact that Boogaboo has improved the B over many generations, and for its, in my opinion, outdated design, it is legitimately about as perfect as it's going to get while the Dragonfly is brand new, but we can get into all that when we make that video. We were also asked to compare the Dragonfly to the new version of the Cybex Balios S Lux, where the viewer adds that, although they have very different prices, I'm going to move countries within Europe, and the support from Boogaboo seems more certain. And this is true. If you move away from the distributor where you're going to buy the stroller, then Boogaboo will, in my experience, be a much easier manufacturer to get support from than Cybex. That being said though, in addition to being half the price, 
the new Balios is a larger, heavier, sturdier, and more terrain-capable model than the Dragonfly, and which one will be best will depend on a lot of factors, like how much you use a car to get around, how much you'll need the Balios's added terrain capability, how much stored space you have, and other things. This is a bit of an apples and oranges pairing in my opinion, so it's somewhat hard to give a definitive recommendation without considering these other factors. The last two models that were asked about I'm not going to cover here unfortunately, the first being the Inglesina Electa, which we simply don't have here in Norway, and while I could give some opinions on it, this is something I'd rather do one on one rather than publicly in a video. The second model is the Thula Shine, which we do have here, but though I've checked it out a couple of times in stores, I haven't really gotten deep into its mechanisms, so I'd rather not risk disparaging one of these two by preferring the other, at the present moment at least. We do, however, plan to get to the Shine at some point in the future, and we'll be sure then to do a comparison when we get there. Before concluding, there were a few other questions under our Dragonfly videos about other models entirely, or specific life situations where the viewer wasn't exactly asking about the Dragonfly in particular. And I wanted then just to say that if you need some specific help or would like an in-depth consultation, anybody who wants is welcome to engage with us on our Patreon page. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page as well, which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.